again, we saw the momentum shift on some signals briefly. Uh, others, it did not. NASDAQ had a few. It turned back to bullish. S&P had a couple. It turned back to bullish. Momentum line back to bullish. But if you watch the video all the way through, I'll show you the trend lines, the divergences, and again, using wedges on the weekly chart. Uh, again, we're probably going to complete a divergence on indicators like momentum here and others that I'm going to be showing you this video. The awesome oscillators at bars are turning green. I told you to be watching for that. It is. So these signals produce a sideways move. We never got any red bars reflecting momentum. Over here we did. Over here in this decline we did. Over here we did not. Once the divergence completes, awesome oscillator and momentum and other signals, the momentum line and bars turn to red and that will likely signal a reversal in the daily time frame that will trigger a reversal in the weekly time frame. Same thing with NASDAQ. Again, we saw momentum signals begin to turn bearish, but it didn't flip the trend. Same thing over here. It didn't flip the trend. We saw some weakness here, more weakness with NASDAQ than S&P, but it turned right back to bullish as I talked about there on Thursday. Divergence is likely forming on indicators like momentum here and all the indicators I'm showing you in this video. Signals remain bullish. They're forming divergences in the daily time frame. When they complete, it will likely start a reversal in the daily that will spill over into the weekly a shot at the head and shoulder formations. If we rally Friday, now we go into earnings here. Do we get a gap and trap and start to sell off on Friday or we now start seeing earnings come down the pike? Had the blackout period now, so the buybacks have gone bye-bye for a while. We've seen other sell-offs when that ends before. I encourage you to watch this video all the way through. Please support the channel with the link directly below that allows me to be able to provide you this information. If you like the chart, if you like the indicators, let me know that by supporting the channel today. I thank you for your consideration for that. Watch the video all the way through. Important stuff, man. It's up half a percent S&P moved higher the VIX is not and again there's a discrepancy often that marks turning points we'll see what happens quickly as the dollar has been rising the S&P has been shrugging it off uh, we've had the dollar breakout back test we got a bottoming tail in the weekly time frame we have this double bottom pattern but yet Bitcoin has been selling off a theory about what's going on here we have this short-term decoupling between the S&P 500 and Bitcoin Bitcoin is now testing the 200 over 20 percent it's down like 23 percent or something like that it's going to try to bottom surrounding the tw uh, 200 period moving average uh, previously i talked about bitcoin joining the s p and making a new high did not could bitcoin now be leading the charge s p about to follow bitcoin lower and bitcoin gets a rebound s p plays catch up if bitcoin has a double top on its hand i just want to show you something real fast as the s p is forming the divergence slamming into all these trend lines that i'm talking about watch the video all the way through i'm going to show you super important trend lines you don't want to miss it right now seeing the charts refresh it put it fresh in your mind as we go into friday's trading session and on into next week in the dollar breakout in the weekly time frame we've seen it uh, break the downward trend line we've seen it back test we've got this bottoming tail we got confirmation we got the follow-through so if the dollar pauses a little bit that can help Bitcoin but right now the S&P kind of been having kind of a positive correlation for the short term a short-term decoupling between Bitcoin and the S&P I'll show you this and I, I've been calling for a divergence to form on Bitcoin because I think it's going to bottom here short-term bottom surrounding the 200 period and it hit it today we've had this off everybody uh, in crypto was oh it's over it's over it's over and I, I said I think it's going down to that 200 or maybe even to this trend line right here and then I think it's going to go down I think it'll rally back up towards the 100 Bitcoin stays below the 100 then it has a double top pattern on it and it's not like the S&P it couldn't make a new high but I think it's going to try to bounce around this trend line or the 200. We may even overthrow the trend line. Sometimes you do. We did over here. But this blue trend line is the linear scaling. We've already broken the trend line in the log scaling. But I think it's going to try to bottom here. Uh, you got a possible five leg push lower. You got a possible uh, larger move down if, in fact, the double top. What would be bullish for Bitcoin is getting back above the 100 period and clearing this resistance zone uh, that we turned off of. Uh, with this peak and this peak right here. My signals turned bearish back up here in early June uh, for Bitcoin. They're still bearish, but I think you've got a, a good shot of a short-term bottom. 
And if you get a bottom right here, it may just get a counter trend. But if we, uh, it, 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 you know, or may or go overthrow the 100 and then still come back and break this trend line or try to break it now and then attempt to rebound. Sometimes trend lines uh, reshape and change. But I think you're going to get this diversions like you had over here with Bitcoin. If Bitcoin rebounds and the S&P starts to sell off, then my theory about this short term decoupling between the two, I think, will play out. Uh, Bitcoin, if it stops making new highs, then and it makes a lower high with the next rebound or we go a little bit lower and then re rebound and we, we make a lower high surrounding the 100. Bitcoin falls to 100 period moving average. When you're above it, good things are happening. When you're below it, bad things are happening. And again, my signals turn bearish up here. And then the trend signals all began to turn bearish as we drop below the 100 period moving average or just before it as well, the early part of June. So if Bitcoin can bottom, which I believe it will with this diversions, uh, the S&P could start turning down, Bitcoin could start rebounding and that short term decoupling can continue, although the long term trend between them is a positive correlation. They do have periods of short term decoupling. Now, just let me say this, if Bitcoin was going to go into a bull market to be confirmed in a bull market, it's got to be able to clear the 69,000 area, be able to stay above it. Uh, it. Actually, right here, it reversed off of it. If you want to see my latest Bitcoin video, I'll link it at the end of this video and you can see exactly all my signals and what I'm talking about. Some really, really cool charts on Bitcoin. Say this, if Bitcoin blows past the 200 and stays below it, then that's going to be bearish. But it's probably, and it may, it may drop below it and then try to get back above it and have it fail. But again, uh, the 100 period, extremely important with, for, for Bitcoin. And I, the only reason why I'm taking the time to tell you this, and if you are, don't like crypto and it bores you, interested, just understand my theory that if Bitcoin is bottoming right now, the S&P could be topping. That's the point I'm trying to make because right now they have a short term negative correlation between the two, whereas the S&P has been rising, Bitcoin has been dropping. And Bitcoin is probably going to bottom here with the diversions surrounding the 200 or maybe just below it uh, and then attempt to rebound. Is there a feeble rebound or a big rebound? We'll see, or maybe a Fibonacci retracement. But again, you got to be able to get back above that 100 period moving average, stay above it. And again, I would encourage you to watch my Bitcoin video. I see some pretty fascinating charts, some really, really cool Bitcoin charts. But I, I, I was under the impression we would fall the S the fall the S and P higher. But then all my signals began to turn bearish. They turned bearish here, turned back down. Uh, they remained bearish, and then we turned back up. They turned bullish briefly, and then they turned right back to bearish there in early June, uh, June. Uh, 7th all the way through the 10th the momentum signals flipped and then the trend signals the 11th you know the 10th the 11th to the 14th and then we lost that uh, 100 period moving average and going down ever since on into July now again Bitcoin can find a bottom and rebound maybe the S&P starts reversing I'm watching this short period you know they they both peaked uh, March Bitcoin just a little bit sooner it's been in the sideways trading range but right now uh, you've lost now so 23% drop and we're about there at 23% or so, 22, something like that right here. Right now, I didn't measure it, but we were at 19 right here. So we're probably around, you know, 21, 22, 23% or something like that. Wouldn't be surprised to see Bitcoin get a rebound surrounding the 200 and the S&P could begin to move back towards its 200 period. And if it does, guess where it's going to be? It's going to be a horizontal support. Where's Bitcoin? A horizontal support right here at the, uh, the 56,000 or, uh, yeah. Yeah, 56,000, uh, six, 700 or something like that. P, if it goes back to horizontal support, then you've got the possibility of the head and shoulders formation. Thing is Bitcoin going to turn back to bullish and it lost a 20 week? Is the S&P going to go lose a 20 week? Is the S&P going to go lose a 100 day? I think Bitcoin's going to bottom here. I think the S&P is going to sell off. I think the short term decoupling will continue. Just my theory. Hopefully they'll go back to a positive correlation at these short periods of decoupling that sometimes go off. The S&P made a new high in January of 2022. Guess what? Bitcoin peaked back in November of 2021, a couple months earlier. S&P made a new high. Bitcoin's not. Could be a huge red flag. My theory, thought I'd share it with you. I told you again, the rally we have right now could be the fireworks, the grand finale, if you will, since it's a... Uh, pun inten intended since uh, it's Independence Day here, we could see a b reversal begin. I'd encourage you to watch this video all the way through. I got NASDAQ charts to show you, S&P charts, stuff you need to know. Dow is not moving to a new high. It turned off of a long-term 125-year trend line. Got a possible bear flag now here under construction. We hit the 78.6 Fibonacci over here. You've got this potential double top, the confirmation line here. 
will the bear flag begin to play out for the Dow? You see, confirm a lower high on the Dow. The Dow is not making new highs. It's diverging with the NASDAQ. The S&P is diverging with the Russell. Russell still has a possible head and shoulders in play with this slanted neckline right here. And again, it is making a series of lower highs after this peak right here, which never did go back up to the all-time high, performing a divergence and now possibly confirmation of a lower high if we come down and we start breaking uh, this slanted neckline. Russell has gone in this sideways range for a very long time, for a couple years here. The Russell and the S&P, S&P below the Russell above, this is the IWM uh, uh, Russell ETF. Uh, the Russell is diverging. It peaked back over here in 2021 and it's making a lower high and it's turned down off of that trend line. I've talked about this previously. previously. Uh, S&P is diverging with it. This is the 2022 high. This is down. This is going up. They're diverging. This is what happens at turning points. Uh, back when we had the S&P going higher, uh, the Russell made a lower high and they diverged from one another. Right there at that top as their larger divergence has, de has developed right here. The Dow and the NASDAQ are diverging from one another. Huge warning signs. So, no, but this time it's different. AI, this time is no different. You'll have the divergences and uh, with breath indicators as I've been talking about and in this video. Hey, I want to wish everybody in the United States a happy Independence Day holiday. Now the market will be closed on Independence Day. Futures is open. It will um, close tomorrow early on and then reopen later in the afternoon as it usually does. And then we'll have the Friday session, a short trading week this week, but a very, very light volume as retail investors push it higher. Remember I told you we can get manipulation up or down. The big money They've already gone until investors are pushing uh, the market higher on very, very light volume. Interesting things are happening. Important things that I just uh, needed to share with you. I just do a short video. I know everybody's busy driving with family and friends. Celebrate the U.S. anyways. A quick, quick video. Uh, just some important things I want to share with you. Look, the Dow used to struggle. It already peaked forming a potential bear flag. We were down while the S&P and NASDAQ were up. Remember, you have the Magnificent Seven having a great influence over the S&P and the NASDAQ. The cap is about one third on the S&P. You know, seven stocks controlling one third of the S&P and half of the NASDAQ. So do keep that in mind. We need to point that out over and over because it's masking what's really going on. Again, the stocks on the S&P 500 struggling. We're getting all these divergences with market breadth indicators, but quickly the S&P was up 28 points, up just over half a percent. NASDAQ was up 0.88 percent. The Russell, again, flat. The Dow, flat. Massive divergence between the S&P and the Russells. I've continued to point out over the last few weeks, I've been showing you Versions between the two, massive signal of a market top when they diverge, when the small caps and the large caps diverge, we have the diversions between the NASDAQ and the Dow. The Dow has made a lower high so far. NASDAQ's making a higher high, and you're getting that divergions between the NASDAQ and the Dow and huge red flags. And my signals remain bullish. The bullish events that I told you to be watching for, the awesome oscillators turning green, that's now happening. Those diversions is complete. It will likely allow the divergences in the weekly time frame to begin to play out. Our massive warning signs, huge red flags, like the S&P coming up here, moving above this this peak right here again we had a topping tail but I told you the candlestick is meaningless uh, uh, candlesticks have to be confirmed and get a follow-through this candlestick did not it didn't even get a follow-through or confirmation if that happened still go higher I've been talking about the channels on the 60-minute charts I've been talking about the trend line that we're now at on the weekly chart show it to you on the daily chart but again the AD line look at this the AD line it's coming up here and it's got a series of lower highs. The S&P's getting a series higher highs diverging with the AD line. Advancing declining issues. It's warning a major turn is about to happen. Warning you about other divergences that are warning something is about to happen. Look at the equal weight, the S&P equal weight. It's making a series of lower highs. The S&P 
is going up and making new highs. Again, they're diverging from one another, and that's warning that a reversal is getting ready to happen. Again, this is everything being equal. The S&P 500, it's not moving to new highs. You have, again, seven stocks controlling the stack in the S&P 500. Massive warning signs here uh, as we go into the balance of the week uh, for the short trading week. We were advancing on lighter volume, but these warning signs with breath indicators and versions is everywhere in the weekly and the daily time frame. Monthly time frame, you have multiple point divergences, as I've talked about. Lots of divergences everywhere. You have like a stocks of other 20-day moving average getting a lower high. Again, you're, you have the S&P making new all-time highs with less than half. We're making new highs. Only 47% 40 of the stocks on the S&P are above their 20-day moving average. That means you have 53% of the stocks below... 53%. Did you hear what I just said? Over half are below their 20-day moving average. Just under 47%, 46.80%. And so, you know, 47%, again, less than 50% of them are above their 50-day moving average. Again, these divergences have formed, multiple point divergences. The S&P is making new all-time highs. Something is wrong. The majority of the stocks below their 20-day moving average, below their 50-day moving average. The S&P is making new highs, being controlled by the Magnificent Seven. Huge red flag. All these diversions, and then the ones in, on the S&P indicators as well in the daily and weekly time frame forming. Had those divergences in the weekly time frame. I told you we had set up a divergence with these topping tails four sessions ago. Uh, we had set up a divergence, but I told you it may not be done, and these candlesticks are meaningless unless they get confirmation and a fall through, which it did not. I told you we still may go up to those other trend lines I've been talking about. I told you to be watching. If we go sideways, do we start seeing some green? And we got it on Thursday, pardon me, on Tuesday with the NASDAQ, second bar on Wednesday, and we got it today, the first green bar today for the S&P. When these divergences are done, uh, it will likely trigger the reversal in the weekly time frame. you got the same divergence going on here with the MACD. It's interesting. NASDAQ is moving to a new high. So far, NVIDIA is not. NVIDIA rallied on, light, uh, on uh, trading day today. We've got a possible bear flag on it. Let's go back and get a lower high, fill the gap, or form a divergence in the daily time frame. We already have one in the weekly time frame on NVIDIA. I'll be watching this closely along with the diversions right here on the MACD. We'll likely finish when the stochastic rolls over and completes its diversions. Stochastic will roll over first in all likelihood. Stack daily chart. NASDAQ weekly chart and S&P both have these divergences. I've talked about them at great length and detail. Again, going to be looking to see if we get a red bar here going forward here. Diversions could be done. You've got, again, the same negative diversions going here on the MACD, the RSI. You've got those back-to-back -back topping tails. I told you, candlesticks have to be confirmed to mean anything. And again, I also told you that we may hover around this area. We have a rising wedge in the weekly time frame, and we may hover around that area for a little while. That's why we start a reversal off of this area very soon before the week ends, or possibly next week if we start seeing uh, the diversions complete in the daily time frame. But now you're you're getting it in the daily on the awesome oscillator. You already have it here in the weekly. The S&P got its first green awesome oscillator bar today. I told you this might happen. It might show up if the diversions was not yet done on the RSI in the daily time frame. Again, we have the same topping tail. No confirmation. No reversal of conditions here on these daily charts. We went sideways. We corrected sideways. And I told you if that's the case, we could still go higher and, again, get green bars here. Have the MACD turn back up. The MACD will likely turn up more and... Uh, get above the signal line. It's still below the signal line here. We'll probably see that happen. And then we'll be watching to see if we get uh, the diversions. We don't have to get above the signal line. Sometimes you don't. But, uh, you know, if we uh, get another green bar on the awesome oscillator, we very well could. 
going to be watching to see if we start getting a, a couple of green bars. You can reverse with a green bar. You don't have to have a red bar to reverse. Please start a reversal before the red bar shows up. The Dow recently did that at its last reversal. Some P daily chart here. And again, we're hitting that trend line I've been talking about in the weekly time frame. I'll show it to you on the daily real fast. And we got that gravestone doji here on the weekly chart for the S&P 500. I'm going to be looking to see what kind of bar we get this week. And again, we had kind of a sloppy top until the, the week before that. But I was watching to see, will the gravestone doji be confirmed before the week ends or not? On our short trading week, get the jobs report on Friday before the market opens, get a gap and trap, higher something and then turn down or then flat and then get a topping tail or something like that. You could see a reversal bar before uh, the week ends here with the weekly chart, get a gap and trap on the daily. But again, the same divergences forming. Well, this time is different. It's not. I told you back over here when we bounced off the 20 week moving average, I told you that might be a bottom. And if so, we can go up to the trend lines or overthrow them. We overthrew the trend line. We're hitting another trend line in the weekly time frame that I've been talking about. We're at the upper boundary of a rising wedge. Now, I'm showing you the monthly chart. Most people stuck in the face of the planet never look at monthly charts. Even people on Wall Street, even people in the stock market, they never look at uh, a good majority of never look at a chart at all. I want to sell fundamentals and earnings are going to be great. Well, earnings is that the, the, the earnings the economy starts going, then the earnings will uh, start to, um, you know, begin to unravel. Even most people uh, that follow the stock market don't look at the long term uh, monthly chart. And this is it. And right here, you can see this trend line as well as I can. We're slamming right up into it here, uh, give or take again. When we peaked in early 2022 and at the very beginning of the year in 2022, we slammed up in this trend line. I talked about that at the time and you had this this channel. And again, it's not the 50 week moving average. Now we're slamming up into this trend line going all the way back to the 2000 top. It's a, you know, the bursting of the tech bubble, the dot com stocks. And I was there and they said the same thing. No possible way that the tech bubble is going to burst and it did and NASDAQ ended up dropping 82%. P is right at this trend line right here and the Dow is turning off of a trend line that's 125 years old that is called other tops. The Dow's not moving into a new high. It has a possible double top. You've got multiple point negative divergences which uh, led to a reversal over here. That's what you have right here. Every single divergence has led to at least a 17% drop uh, if not more. And again, time is going to be no different. Oh, but this time is different. You don't understand. AI is going to change the world. It's no different. Other competitors are coming around for NVIDIA. We had other Wall Street darlings back in 2000. Some of them have been delisted. Other ones, look at Amazon. Amazon collapsed in 2000. At about 90%. It was one of the dot-com stocks that survived. I wouldn't ignore this trend line right here. The S&P 500 is up 1.40% for the week so far. It is up 78 points or so. Pardon me, I read that wrong, 76 points. Again, I've been talking about the channel. I've been talking about the rising wedge. And I told you here again that we very well may have a bottom to go up and get a lower high like we did here or a higher high like we did over here. And I told you if we did, we can go up to the upper channel line or overthrow it. We overthrew it right there, connecting that point and that point. And again, uh, I've connected uh, the trend line slightly excluding the shadow there. We've overthrown that, but we had to to uh, topping tails for the previous two weeks uh, that have, that have uh, turned off of it. I told you we might dance around here for a little while. We did on the NASDAQ like we did on the S&P. And the S&P, again, it, it rose here it got a peak, turned down, went higher. NASDAQ rose, got a peak, and turned back down and got a lower high, as I've talked about. Again, I think we're not going to uh, probably go after whatever peak is made here. I think this will be it, and I think it'll start a reversal with this divergence that I've been talking about. So again, this is the trend line, and here we are. Uh, we're right here at this level. Uh, might be here on the weekly chart. It looks like we can maybe inch a little higher, maybe even overthrow this level. But you've got this rising wedge, complacency, streams. People all over the Internet are saying there's nothing taking AI down. We're seeing 
over the last few weeks a strong reversal with Nvidia. Nvidia dragged the whole market down with it. It's likely that that's going to be the case. The same kind of thing back in 2000 with the dot com bubble. Nothing's taken it down. It crashed and then they all said it was over, it was over. It rebounded back up, crashed. The Nasdaq crashed 82% and they proclaimed it was over, over, over. The internet and, you know, the dot-com stocks and tech, that's the wave of the future. There's no possible way it could possibly go down. And yet it did. Say the same thing. This time it's different. AI, it's different. There's no difference. It's been artificially propped up with government intervention, with the stimulus checks, with the infinity and beyond, and even the Fed. The Fed's been tightening, but yet we're not seeing the recession and everything because the government's spending $7 trillion a year. They're taking, in, you know, nearly five trillion and spending another two. Absolute insanity. But they could, you know, postpone a recession. It's going to happen. It, you can delay it. You could postpone it for a little while, but you can't stop it. A, le a legitimate recession from happening. No amount of money can stop a legitimate recession from happening. The government is spending seven trillion dollars a year, and artificially propping up the economy for a while. But again. A recession is coming, and again, these divergences will likely produce reversal rather than a pullback. And if you get a reversal, good chance you're getting a top and a going to usher in a bear market. So I'm watching this trend line as we go into Friday's trading and on into next week. Maybe we even overthrow it, like uh, the channel, but negative divergences with rising wedges, complacency reigning supreme, market making new highs, and indicators showing more than half the stocks are below their 20-day moving average and 50-day moving average. Uh, not very convincing. And you get these divergences everywhere. Not just on the RSI. It's not just on the MACD. It's not just on the awesome oscillator. It's everywhere. You got it here with momentum. You got this divergence going on. Again, it looks like we're just right under that trend line. So I'll be watching that trend line. And again, we might overthrow it. Rising wedges sometimes do. But that possibility at the channel as well. But again, you've got the divergence. This one led to the 27.5% sell-off. This one led to the bottom. This one led to the top. This one will likely lead to a top that will give you a major reversal. Every bear market, every recession, they say the same thing. Oh, oh no, we're going to have the soft landing out of the Fed. It's got us covered. It's the same stuff. And you get the people going on these financial channels saying the same thing every time. Get that propaganda out there for the retail investors as the institutions begin to sell. You get all this propaganda about AI, 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 nothing, nothing, no possible way it can go down. You know, as NVIDIA gets more and more competition, it's going to go down. Back at the dot-com bubble, they were saying the same thing about Cisco dot-com stocks and the tech stocks and Intel and JDS Uniface and all of them. Names that you, you, you don't even know because they don't exist anymore because weeding out of the weak hands and that's what the uh, bear market will do and that's what a, you know a lot of what they call the zombie companies, these companies that are to, uh, last on, on just debt, on borrowing. That's what a bear market does and that's what a recession does and it moves the, the, the companies that shouldn't even be uh, listed. They're saying the same thing about the dot-com. Stocks are saying now about AI. Again, watch this rising wedge. Watch these divergences. Right here with momentum. Looks like it's getting ready to play out. Watch the candlestick. How do we close? What happens around this trend line? Even if we overthrow it, do we get a topping tail surround it? Still in the weekly time frame. Look at the diversions here. It's all over the place on my indicators. The bullish diversions gave us this. The bearish divergence over here gave us this. This is likely going to give us a reversal that's going to usher in the bear market. But let me be clear. My signals at the moment remain bullish. I show you my signals in every single video. In the daily time frame, my signals, momentum tried to turn bearish, but we went sideways. My signals have not yet turned. These divergences cause me to believe that they're going to turn, and when they do, divergences here in the weekly time frame will begin to play out, and you'll get a major reversal in all likelihood. You're going to have a Fed pivot. Again, Fed fund futures has still got, you know, two penciled in, two, two cuts. The Fed with the dot plot took it down to one, which I predicted would happen. I told you the market was not expecting that. The market has shrugged it off. Something's going to happen with these divergences, whether geopolitical whether trend turns about that, I don't know, but the market is predicting something with these divergences, something is about to happen that's going to produce a sell-off. It'll be a combination of things. I don't know.
said, if we can drop on the S&P, come down, you can form a head and shoulders. I didn't draw that very well, but uh, you know, you got a possible neckline here at the 20 period. You can come back, you can break the 10 and 20 period moving average, and that's the momentum line there with it too. In the weekly time frame, break the momentum cloud here, come back down, come back up to the momentum cloud, and form the right shoulder. You can easily do that. That's the pattern that formed over here. That's the pattern we got over here on that. And you can make the case for the shoulder here or the shoulder here, this part of the head formation. It's the pattern we got here, left shoulder, right, a head formation. And then we got either right shoulder there or again, part of the head and this being a smaller right shoulder. But you had the same pattern set up here at the top and bottom. It's probably going to try to set up here. So again, it looks like we're just below that here on the weekly chart. This is the log scaling. It might be a little different with the linear. It might be at that, with, but with the log scaling, it's directly overhead. Bring up the linear. It looks like we're a little bit closer to it with the linear scaling. And in the daily time frame, it looks like we're close to it. So again, I'm going to be watching this trend line with both log and linear here. Here it is on the S&P daily chart. This is the linear scaling. Again, the log, it looks like it's a little higher. The linear it looks like it's like direct, we're directly, the trend line's directly above us. Uh, very, very close. Uh, we're nearly touching it. Again, possible head and shoulders here. If we come back down, and again, this larger rising wedge, this is the rising wedge I've been talking about in the weekly time frame. Uh, you end up coming back down and, and breaking down and coming back towards the 200, towards this horizontal level at 4,900. You can set up a head and shoulders pattern. Now, again, we had a divergence with our high from a few days ago. No confirmation of the candlestick. I told you that's required. We got a topping tail. I told you we could still go higher. And this divergence may not be done yet. If we start seeing green awesome oscillator bars, we started seeing green awesome oscillator bars. Maybe we get a smaller uh, divergence here uh, that uh, looks maybe looks something like this over here that produced this sell off. Only this one could produce a reversal, as I've said, because you have now divergences in the weekly and the monthly time frame. Divergence mean means price is going higher, but the indicator is not making a new high. And that's what you have on the weekly chart. That's what you have on the daily chart. And again, it may be that the MACD is not done here yet, turning back up. Uh, so we'll be watching. And again, you might overthrow that trend line. Rising wedges often get overthrows. We'll see what happens. But again, uh, this divergence is complete on the awesome oscillators that I showed you earlier in the RSI and MACD here. Likely see trigger the negative divergences in the weekly time frame. And it looks like we're very close to this trend line, uh, just uh, just directly underneath it, or or uh, maybe on on the log scaling a little bit. Uh, it's a little bit higher there, as we saw in the weekly chart. It's both log and linear. Some people only use one or the other. People usually look at linear long term uh, scaling uh, for uh, uh, charts uh, is is best uh, used with log. This is a trend line I've been showing you in the weekly time frame of the, the rising wedge. And again, we got the same thing on NASDAQ quickly. NVIDIA was up 3.84%. It got a rebound there on Friday. We had a doji candle of a decision last week. Again, it had a topping tail. Same thing here. Got to watch and see if this is going to be confirmed and get a follow through. We got confirmation with the doji, but no follow through. I'm watching to see, do we set up a lower high, go back and fill the gap? Or do we go up and challenge that high and get a divergence right here in the most recent price action? Again, so far, video has peaked with that topping tail and had uh, these divergences give us a bit of a sell off here. We'll be watching to see if NVIDIA stops making new highs. If it does, then NASDAQ will. NASDAQ is going higher. NVIDIA is not at the moment. NVIDIA could form a divergence. We had a, a, a rally here on Friday, but as we're doing that, the 10 is crossing below the 20 on NVIDIA. And you've got a potential bear flag here that is set up. Uh, if we go back higher, we could attempt to fill the gap on a closing basis and still set up a lower high and uh, maybe redefine the boundaries of the uh, bear flag if we can't move to a new high. But we'll be watching to see if we set up a lower high or go up and form a divergence on the RSI, which will it be? NVIDIA daily chart. Same thing here on NASDAQ. We've got the divergence going on here with the previous peak. And again, you've got your rising wedge uh, here. I've just taken, excluding the shadow here, connected this peak here. And again, we overthrew it a little bit. 
for this week and had topping tails uh, just uh, slightly above it there, uh, but turned down for two, week, two weeks straight. We have back-to-back -back topping tails. And again, I told you we may hover around this area for a little while like we did over here. We had this peak and then we turned down and then we went back up, but we were there for several weeks over here. We were there for several weeks, for seven weeks before we started to see the weakness on the NASDAQ. You've got a rising wedge here. You've got a rising wedge on the S&P 500 with negative divergences. All these other divergences produce major corrections. Correction here, correction here, reversal here, uh, and reversal here. And again, we had a reversal this last one. This next one will likely give, a, or we had a, a correction here at this last one. It will likely be that this one will be a reversal. Now, we've already seen now central bankers start to lower rates. You know, they, they, they did it in uh, Euroland there with the European Central Bank. Well, hey, the DAX has peaked. Again, total pivot when they start lowering rates. The Fed is likely going to fall these other central bankers, meaning the market is about to peak. And again, likely before the Fed starts a pivot. Now, they could pivot. They could start it in September. It's possible we see the market begin to top and turn before they do that. They're going to start doing that because a recession is coming. Election year. Oh, we're going to, you know, can't go down in election year. Well, in 2000, you went up. You peaked in two, uh, March. You sold off. You went back up and tested the high. Your peak there in August. You sold off until the election. In 2008, you sold off. 2008, into that election. Pandemic happened in an election year. The only reason why we didn't keep going down is because they threw five trillion, six trillion in stimulus or whatever it was at it, and then we had the Fed step in and do a QE infinity and beyond. Artificial stimulus, you get an artificial recovery, you get an artificial stock market rally. We're going to have the recession that we never had. So again, these divergences are getting ready to play out, and you've now had these rising wedges in the weekly uh, time frame. Linear scaling with the NASDAQ. We also have this channel that I'm watching again with this shadow here and those longer term log scaling charts. We have a really, some really nice looking rising wedge patterns with our divergences.